Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The content of this video is how a BEV, battery electric vehicle works. This video will explain the early BEV. Modern BEV. Motor and inverter. Battery. Fast charging standards. And why the range of BEV is reduced in winter. Electric vehicles were first introduced in the early 1900s. For example, Detroit Electric produced approximately 13,000 BEVs from 1906 to 1939. However, they were not widely accepted in the market for a long time after that. In early BEVs, the electricity in the battery was controlled by a variable resistor to drive a DC, direct current motor. In a DC motor, the coil placed between magnets is rotated by flowing electricity through it. The variable resistor converts electricity into heat to control the voltage applied to the motor, which results in wasted energy and makes the system inefficient. When the coil is rotated by any other power source, it generates electricity and charges the battery. The era of mass-produced modern BEVs began with the launch of the Nissan LEAF in 2010. In the modern BEV, a three-phase AC motor and inverter are used instead of a DC motor and variable resistor respectively. Additionally, a lithium-ion battery is mainly used. The inverter converts the direct current electricity from the battery into alternating current, which is then supplied sequentially to the coils of the three-phase AC motor. This magnetizes the three coils and rotates the motor core, which is comprised of a shaft and a magnet. Let's take a closer look at the operation of the inverter. But before that, we need to know how a transistor works. A transistor is a type of semiconductor that can control a large amount of electricity using a small amount of electricity. Currently, the transistor is turned off. When the circuit switch is turned on, a small amount of electricity flows into the transistor and the transistor is turned on. Then, the transistor allows a large amount of electricity to flow and lights up the lamp. This function is called the switching action of a transistor. The inverter contains six transistors, from transistor 1 to transistor 6. The control unit turns on transistor 2 and transistor 5. Electricity flows in the order of the battery's positive terminal, transistor 5, coil V, coil W, transistor 2, and the battery's negative terminal. Then, coil V is excited to the north pole and coil W to the south pole. A repulsion force is generated between the north pole of the rotor and coil V, and an attraction force is generated between the rotor and coil W. As a result, the rotor rotates slightly. Next, the control unit turns off transistor 2, and turns on transistor 4. Electricity flows in the order of transistor 5, coil V, coil U, transistor 4, and the battery's negative terminal. Then, coil U is excited to the south pole. An attraction force is generated between the south pole of the rotor and coil V, and a repulsion force is generated between the rotor and coil U. As a result, the rotor rotates slightly again. The inverter repeats this operation to control the motor rotation. The transistor used in inverter is called a power transistor because it controls large amount of electricity. The power transistor that is currently mainstream is capable of repeating on-off cycles 2000 times per second. Nowadays, the mainstream power transistors are silicon-based IGBT, insulated gate bipolar transistor. 
However, more efficient silicon carbide-based MOSFET has begun to be used, but due to higher cost, usage is limited to some car models such as Porsche Taycan, Tesla Model 3, and Hyundai Ioniq 5, etc. In a BEV, the minimum unit of a battery is called a battery cell, and multiple battery cells are combined to form a battery module. In addition, multiple battery modules are installed in a vehicle. In the first generation Nissan LEAF from 2010, the battery capacity was 24 kilowatt hours and was composed of 48 battery modules each containing four battery cells. In the 2023 Porsche Taycan Turbo S, the battery capacity is 93.4 kWh and is composed of 33 battery modules each containing 12 battery cells. There are various fast charging standards depending on the region or market. In Europe, CCS2, Combined Charging System Type 2, is used as the main standardized fast charging format, which currently allows fast charging up to a maximum of 350 kilowatts. In North America, CCS1, Combined Charging System Type 1, is used as the main standardized fast charging format, which currently allows fast charging up to a maximum of 350 kilowatts. In China, GBT is used as the fast charging standard, which currently allows fast charging up to a maximum of 350 kilowatts. In Japan, CHAD-MO is used as the fast charging standard, which currently allows fast charging up to a maximum of 160 kilowatts. Tesla has developed its own fast charging system called NOx, North American Charging Standard, for each market, which currently allows fast charging up to a maximum of 250 kilowatts. This system was previously known as TPS, Tesla Proprietary Connector. In Europe, the standard is almost unified with CCS2. Tesla has equipped its vehicles with CCS2 ports and built its charging stations to be compatible with CCS2. In North America, Tesla's Knox and CCS1 are competing for dominance. China and Japan have proposed a new standard called Zhaoji, but it remains uncertain whether it will become popular or not. As there are various fast charging standards, it seems difficult to establish a global unified standard for fast charging, similar to the different plugs that are used for household appliances. This chapter will uncover why the driving range of a BEV decreases in low outside temperatures. Most passenger cars are equipped with an air conditioning system. This system compresses and expands refrigerant to liquefy and vaporize it, and transfers heat through heat exchangers, located in the vehicle cabin and engine compartment. The system consists of a compressor to compress the refrigerant, a condenser to liquefy the refrigerant, and an evaporator to vaporize the refrigerant. In the summer, vehicles with a gasoline or diesel engine uses the evaporator to vaporize the refrigerant and remove heat from the vehicle cabin, compress the refrigerant to a high temperature, high pressure state with the compressor, and dissipate heat into the atmosphere with the condenser to liquefy the refrigerant. Since the compressor is operated by the engine's power, the engine's load increases, and fuel consumption increases. Naturally, this reduces the driving range. BEVs also use a similar system to cool the cabin, but the condenser is operated by a dedicated electric motor instead of an engine. Since the electric motor consumes the battery's electricity, this reduces the driving range. In other words, during the summer when using the air conditioning, vehicles with a gasoline or diesel engine and BEVs experience a decrease in the driving range. In the winter when heating is necessary, vehicles with a gasoline or diesel engine use the engine coolant to circulate through a heater core located in the vehicle cabin, releasing heat into the cabin for heating. In other words, the heating function does not require an additional heat source. Therefore, there is no decrease in the driving range when heating the cabin. BEVs do not have a heat source that can be used for heating, so they operate the compressor and reverse the roles of the two heat exchangers to transfer heat from the outside air to the vehicle cabin. 
Similar to the cooling function, the compressor consumes the battery's electricity, resulting in a reduction in the driving range. In addition, low temperatures can cause a decrease in battery performance, which further reduces the driving range. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.